Hey guys, so I decided just for old times, I was going to do the Naked Brutality Ice Sheet Challenge in RimWorld. So for this one, we do Naked Brutality, we do Losing is Fun, Hardest Difficulty, Commitment Mode, Pick Any Seed, Doesn't Really Matter, Regenerate a World. And so now the main thing I was looking for in this run was to have an ice sheet that's very cold, but also has a friendly tribe that I can go to eventually to trade with later on in the run so that's that was my primary parameters for what i was looking for and i eventually found this seed which has a friendly faction and this really weird peculiar one single ice sheet spot that's all by itself up in the sea ice and I figured this would be a great place to start my adventure. So then I have the mod so I can randomize. I didn't want to hand pick. So I just put some parameters. I just wanted someone who was young and someone who has construction high enough, mining that's high enough, and that's really about all that I needed. The main thing is got to be able to mine some components, and I've got to um, I've got to have high enough construction to make traps. So it wasn't too hard of a thing to filter for. I set it to where it's filter for 50,000, find some eventually, and I went through until eventually I came across this character, which was Undergrounder, was a brawler, had good melee, which is actually really convenient for what I'm going to be doing, but mainly had good construction and good mining. So that was pretty much all I needed. I named this character after myself, and I went ahead and started up the game. So in any ice sheet challenge, the first thing you do is you pause the game if you're allowing yourself to pause. You look around, and all I'm trying to find are the geysers because in order to survive in naked brutality on the ice sheet you need to find a geyser it's the only way you're going to warm yourself up fast enough so i found a geyser and then you zoom out click them around look at all the different geysers and try to find the one that you want now in my case the one that i settled for was this one to the top left there were compacted components or compacted machinery nearby there's tons of steel nearby there's also random broken down buildings i can deconstruct this was pretty much where i settled down this is what i was sold on so on my way to the geyser i made my characters stop and mine all the steel and i just selected it manually to do all of it because we got to get some steel and because this character actually has good mining this actually was the most reasonable way to approach this instead of deconstructing the nearby building now i'm already starting to freeze to death so i don't have a whole lot of time here so i just want to mine until i'm almost to minor hypothermia and then i'm going to put down a stockpile over this geyser just a two by one and then i'm going to bring some of that steel up there so i can build a box around myself in order to keep myself warm around this geyser now i gotta make a dumping stockpile because there's a bunch of rubble over this geyser that i'm going to have to get rid of and then i mark all these for haul get them out of my way so all that we need for this particular situation is a two by two by two without corners in order to minimize the amount of steel that we need and we put on a steel door and we're good to go now you have to be careful once you actually build this because if you leave the door closed, you'll burn to death. So generally, I'll mark the door for help hold it open. So that way, after I make it, my character can uh, open up the door one time and it'll just stay open. The other thing that we got to do is I put down a crafting spot so that I can make a knife. Because the only way we're going to survive the first few days is by running over to a snow hare and stabbing it to death. Now on this particular playthrough, I opted to go for the compacted machinery right away actually, because there's actually a trick where you don't want to stab the rabbits until nighttime, because that'll give you one free hit on them while they're sleeping that's guaranteed to hit something, and it makes it much more likely that you'll get a good fight with the rabbit. It's really dangerous this early on if you get a bad fight with a rabbit and get multiple injuries because it takes so long to tend to him your person might lose their mind while doing it it'll also make you be in major pain instead of minor pain which just adds more negative mood debuffs and makes you that much more likely to go insane Ah oh, yes my knife is completed now it's only a poor knife but it'll have to do and now the time is 22 100 hours so the rabbits should be asleep and right nearby here is a rabbit for me to check out and i'm going to go over to this rabbit and i'm going to attack it in the middle of the night now because it's nighttime i got one free hit on the rabbit and that starts off the fight good it has two major cuts onto it already and now after this i just have to hope for a good fight and if i get a bad fight it's pretty much over now in this case i tried to run away because i should be faster since i injured his leg but for some reason it didn't work. I don't really understand why, so I just turned around and just fought it out with the rabbit. I do have brawler and good melee skill on this character, so it's honestly not the worst thing ever. It should be a pretty reasonable fight. So after that, I went ahead and I picked up the snow hare who was still alive, and then I brought it back to my base in order to finish the job inside of the little geyser home that I have. So as soon as I get into my geyser home, I mark the door to not be able to make it so I can't leave, so I don't have to deal with my person leaving. And at this point, I'm going to melee attack the rabbit to death. 
Now that the rabbit is dead, I'm going to tend to myself first, because if I lose my mind, the number one priority is I don't want an open wound that can get infected. After I close up the wound so I can't get an infection, now for the fun part, I just grab the rabbit raw and just consume it without even butchering it, because it's actually more efficient on food to just eat the rabbit whole instead of butchering it, especially since my character has a very low cooking skill. I don't get enough meat from it. So I didn't get any food poisoning or anything, if that even exists still in this version of RimWorld. Then after that, I decided to just let my character sleep and then try to recover and get ready for the next day. So now it's the next day and my recreation is all the way down. My mood is all the way down from eating a raw snow hare. So I'm going to make a um, horseshoe pole or whatever it's called. And this will allow my character to get some recreation. So I'm going to take this opportunity to max out my recreation to try to keep my mood out of the extreme break threshold. Now, I only get one shot at this because then my person's going to get bored of dexterity play, so I have to make it count. So now I'm going to go grab some steel, and I'm going to start trying to get electricity set up. My main goal here is to get a windmill and a nutrient paste dispenser, but how quickly I'll be able to do that, we'll have to see. Well, I wasn't able to get it to done on this particular day, so I'm gonna have to go beat down another rabbit. So I waited till night, night's almost over. I let my character sleep for as long as they possibly reasonably could. I'm completely starving to death. I'm gonna have to hunt a snow hare now. So there's a snow hare here over on the east side of the map. I'm gonna run over to it and melee attack it before dawn break. So it's still sleeping. I still get that easy hit on it, which starts off the fight really well. I got two easy hits on the rabbit. Was able to get a pretty clean fight with only one injury. So I'm going to immediately try to tend to myself, but my character had a breakdown but this was not the worst kind of breakdown possible it was just a tantrum this is honestly like the best case scenario because now i'm going to get a catharsis and all i had nothing to destroy it was literally just steel walls so now my character has a great mood a great mood buff from catharsis and nothing really went wrong so now i'm going to go run over i attended my wounds and now i'm going to go and run over and just eat a raw snow hare in the middle of the ice sheet so after eating the snow here, we're going to head back and we're going to continue this journey of trying to collect steel and components in order to get electricity and try to get a nutrient paste dispenser. While I was getting ready for making electricity, a trader came by the first event with this storyteller and I decided I don't need this many components. I have other components I can mine. Uh, I'd rather see if this person has any food. And lo and behold, they have some Packer Survival Meals, which is not the best case scenario. Best case scenario would have been Pemmican, but Packer Survival Meals will have to do. So instead, I'm going to sell some of my components, and then I'm going to buy some of these Packer Survival Meals so I don't have to hunt as many snow hares while I try to get electricity online and get a nutrient paste dispenser. So now that life's easy for a little bit, I'm going to take a little detour here just in case I get raided, and I'm going to set up um, a trap and I can also use this to hunt in case any polar bears or a polar bear would not be a good one But like an arctic fox or something roams in I could get them to try to hunt me out of like because they're hungry and then I could uh, Walk them through the trap. So I'm going to set this up With a trap on the right a wall and then another door and that way I can leave the doors open But I can also get in from the side don't have to walk through the trap because if you walk through the trap There's like a 1 in 256 chance you die So I definitely don't want to walk through the trap if I can help it So we'll just build it up now and while well, we still have the chance with these packed survival meals while things are still easy and we're still in catharsis. Now, unfortunately, because I sold those components, I have to dig through this little place here to get to that compacted machinery. I don't want to just walk through the water. Maybe I should have, honestly, but it gets you wet, which makes you freeze way faster. So I have to keep alternating between coming in, warming up until I'm not having, I don't have bad hypothermia and then going back out and mining more. Because if you have hypothermia um, minor, then you lose work speed. So to be efficient, I'm trying to go back in and not just power through until I'm about to get frostbite. So I've got the components I need and now I'm just trying to get more steel from the backside of this little rock wall that we have here in order to get all the components I need for a windmill and for that nutrient paste dispenser that we need. Okay, so I got enough materials and finally I get to place this windmill. Now this was like the moment. I'm like, okay, this is the run. We're actually going to make it. It's really easy to lose these runs and this one looks like it might just be the one. So I'm going to place this windmill closer to the rock wall because I'd like to shift my base over to to there eventually once I have heaters and things. So this will get us started. We can put this here and I put it to where I c it still has enough space to work, but also I can hopefully easily enclose it with walls eventually. Although I did make a little mistake here with putting it too close to the water, but it's nothing
something that I can't figure out a solution to. So I went and gathered some more steel and stuff, and I finally have enough of this nutrient dispenser that I need so badly. So I'm going to put it over here, cram it over in the corner, so I can build a base around the nutrient dispenser, because this is going to be my ticket to survival. It makes materials, it makes food so much more efficient that I won't have to just kill snow hairs every second in order to stay alive. Also, if you don't know, once it's built, you have to click the hopper. I click on the nutrient paste dispenser, click hopper, and then build a hopper in order to feed materials into it. So I went and I gathered some more materials so I could protect at least the nutrient paste dispenser. So if I get raided, I at least can protect it and not lose everything because rebuilding both these components or both these uh, structures, I would just be so resource intensive and so time consuming that it could definitely be the death of me. So at this point, I'm out of packaged survival meals. I am actually malnour malnourished and starving, but I have a catharsis still for a little while. So I was just letting myself get to where I'm starving to death in order to get this set up correctly. And I was taking a risk by doing this, but I felt like the risk was worth it in order to secure the base. So at this point, I was just getting a little bit more steel so I could do some more stuff. And finally, a raid came, which is actually great, although I'm in a terrible spot. So hopefully, I can actually get inside of my little trapped geyser house before this guy catches me. So he is right on my tail. It was super close, but I think I have enough distance that I'm probably going to be okay here. So I make it into my house with actually a decent amount of space. And now for the part I've been waiting for. One of the reasons I was taking a risk and letting myself get malnour malnourished because if this happens, then hopefully I can get food. But this guy may not want to cooperate. So we'll see what happens here. So I have a path right to me. I'm standing right here. I decided to repair the door. And then he doesn't actually want me. Unfortunately for me, he goes straight for the windmill and completely ignores me, which is really bad. This is pretty much the worst case scenario of what this raider could do. And there's really nothing I can do to stop this guy. So he's probably going to destroy this windmill. He got it low. He caught it on fire. And I'm thinking maybe maybe I can get out of here if he goes to the trap fast enough and put out the fire. But he goes to the horseshoes. So he's going to be out there long enough. That windmill's going to get destroyed, which is really unfortunate. But not the end of the world. So he does the same thing to the horseshoe pins. And then he goes into my trap. But I got lucky. He didn't die to the trap. He just went down. So we're quickly going to strip all his clothes off so no, they won't be tainted. And then, oh, never mind. My character had a mental breakdown right then, right when I was stripping him. If I would have stripped him before the mental breakdown, I could have had clothes that were not tainted. So that was extremely unfortunate. Very, very unlucky. But either way, uh, I could lose. I could die here now. I, I could just lose. Because with this um, sad wonder, or just daze, it's actually a daze, uh, I'm extremely malnourished. And if my character goes out in the cold for too long, then she is going to get hypothermia. So it's either I'm going to starve to death, or I'm going to get hypothermia. Uh, it's really hard to say at this point. Malnutrition is already moderate, and I'm already halfway to starving to death. And if it hits 80%, I'm at 50%, if it hits 80%, then I lose my ability to move and I just die. So how long this days goes days goes on could determine the outcome of this game. I'm in the 60s. I'm 60 something percent. I think that said. So things are bad. But I snap. I actually don't snap out of the days. Come to think of it, what actually happens here? And I would have never known this could happen. In the days, my character committed cannibalism while in a daze, which I didn't even know could happen, to be honest with you. So we're actually going to be okay. Even though I have severe malnutrition, um, I'm, I just ate, so now it's okay. But now I'm getting hypothermia. And if the combination of hypothermia and malnutrition is bad enough, I'll go down. So it's really still in the game's hands. But luckily for me, this all happened during the day when the temperature was the highest. And it's already summer in the game, so this is the warmest it's going to be on the ice sheet. And because of this, it takes the longest amount of time that we're possibly going to get for me to actually get serious extreme hypothermia. So we may survive this ordeal. It may actually happen. So we're at serious hypothermia, 56%. If it gets more extreme, we're going to start taking frostbite now. And it, it wore off right then, just in the nick of time. I was able to get back into my little geyser home and I survived. And now I have a half eaten corpse that I can put into the nutrient paste dispenser. Now I'm hungry again. I'm getting extreme, you know, malnutrition again, but 
I should have enough time to get that windmill rebuilt and actually use that that human body efficiently instead of having to eat it raw, which is uh, surprisingly, uh, even with the catharsis, I'm still at extreme mental break threshold because I had raw cannibalism and I'm badly malnourished and I'm cold and just everything is going wrong for my character. So I decide to head over to this guy and strip him, even though he's dead and it's gonna be tainted clothes. The mood debuff's gonna suck, but it's just gonna make my life so much easier to put that jacket on. So now my tolerance to cold is through the roof compared to being naked. My person still has a debuff for being naked because she has no pants, but it's gonna have to do. So I'm gonna set up the windmill, and it's actually good that it got destroyed because I'd put it too close to the water. So this time I can move it up one and smack it down where I can actually like enclose it correctly What like later on. So it's not the worst case scenario that that happened, but you know, it, it'll do, we'll, we'll be able to survive and it definitely long-term has benefits that it, I got to replace it like that. So we gotta get one more component in order to get it, which should not be a big deal. Everything should be pretty much good here. So now it's time to slap down that butcher spot. So we're gonna butcher a human here. Now in order to do this, I actually have to go to the bills and the details and tell human-like corpses in there because by default, it does not let you butcher humans. So I'm gonna go ahead and butcher what's left of this guy. And then we're gonna feed this guy into our nutrient paste dispenser in order to stay alive. Also, we got some human leather, which I'm not probably not gonna do anything with because you get a mood debuff from wearing human leather clothes, but uh, we'll be able to sell it eventually for some money. All right, so after some mishaps with dumping stockpiles and things, I finally was able to fill the hopper, make that nutrient paste meal out of human meat, and I ate it. So now I have some serious mood debuffs. I butchered a human, I ate uh, cooked cannibalism, I have just, I don't know, the world is pretty much ending, but I'm in a catharsis, so you know what, we'll, we'll, we'll probably be okay, and I have enough human meat for, I think, three more meals, so that should last me for at least two days, so things are looking bad, but they're also looking great, considering the scope of what this challenge is. So at this point, I have some free time to actually prep for things, so what I need to do here now is just gather a ton of steel. We're gonna get a bunch of steel in order to secure that windmill from raiders, so that way we can make more consistent fights and get more consistent food when there's events like that without having to replace the windmill. Another reason we need that steel is we gotta replace that trap. We do not wanna get raided or chased by an arctic wolf or something without that trap. We need it in order to stay alive. It's like absolutely critical to have that trap open at all times. So at this point, I've decided to invest in mood modifiers. We actually have a free time finally in order to invest in our mood. So I'm gonna clean up this corner. I'm gonna put down a table, a chest table and a chair. So that way my person can do recreation again because the only thing available right now is the, are those horseshoes which got destroyed. And even if they were here, I couldn't use them because my person is bored of dexterity play. So if I get enough materials, I can slap down a chest table and then with that chest table, I can again get recreation maximum, which will make it so much easier to stop having mental breakdowns. Once we get this, it's not, it won't be smooth sailing necessarily, but life will definitely be a lot easier. All right, so the chest table got built. We got the stool. Uh, our recreation is at zero. Now there's a table over here at this old abandoned place and we can reinstall it next to the chest table in order to maximize the space. Now we'll have a table to eat at, which will get rid of that negative mood debuff that happens whenever we eat. And we'll be able to sit at the chest table in order to refresh our recreation in order to get a giant mood buff from recreation being fully satisfied. So now at this point, you see the recreation bar going up, uh, but we have a problem which is we're kind of running out of food again. Or at least that was what I thought until I realized that it's actually the inconsistent power. So now we have food, but we can't eat it. So I had to put a stockpile down and change the hopper to where we can't load it and all this stuff. So, and just get it to where my person will not eat this human meat, trying to ignore it until the wind starts blowing again. Because without wind, we can't use a nutrient paste dispenser. And if we can't use a nutrient paste dispenser, I don't want my person to eat the human meat. Not only is it not efficient, but it's an even worse mood debuff to do that as opposed to the nutrient paste dispenser. So after some time passed, I mined some steel and finally the power's back on. So I quickly grabbed the nutrient paste dispenser, eat some nutrient paste, and we are all good to go. With the help of the catharsis, I actually am not even in mood break territory at this point. We ate without a table, but that was from the previous one. It should go away. And we've got a bunch of mood buffs now. We have recreation fully satisfied, 
and we don't have to eat without a table anymore, things are looking a lot better. At this point, this run should become much more stable, but it's still up to luck because we have to have animals roam in in order to eat. We have to have raids happen in order to find people to eat. Uh, basically, food is up to God's hand at this point. It's not in our control. So, uh, yeah, there's not really anything we can do. There is a settlement nearby, but our clothes are not good enough to get there without freezing to death. So, and we don't even have enough food to get there if we wanted to. So we really just have to sit here and hope that either animals wander in or that some type of people come with something that we can use. So I'm completely out of food at this point, but I have nothing to do anyway. So I decide to enclose the windmill in case we get raided. So that way I don't have to rebuild it again. And since there's really nothing else I can do, there's no animals left on this map. There's no life at all for me to eat. So we're just gonna go ahead and do whatever productive things we can while trying to keep our mood up as high as we can until something happens with the events. So while I waited for the next event, I decided to add an additional trap over here so I don't have to go run over to the geyser house for the next like uh, trap cycle if something's attacking me or something. And also long term, I just need to do this anyway. And there's really nothing productive for me to do. Maybe I could have been a little bit more productive. I could have instead worked on making a fancy recreation room. But without some kind of art or something to put in it, it's just going to be just as awful as it is right now. So I figured it was I wasn't going to have enough time to accomplish something like that. I wasn't going to have enough time to start making art or anything. So I decided to just work on these defenses and get things, you know, a little bit more secure. So after waiting, 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 some people finally arrived. So I quickly went down and tried to mine some silver that was over in that wall to get some money. Uh, and then I went over to this trader and tried to buy some food. Now, I put a stockpile around any stuff that was on the ground, hoping they'll buy some of it. But unfortunately, they weren't really, weren't really interested in any of it. So really, all I had was the silver I just mined and some medicine I could sell. So I decided to buy what I could, which was two packaged survival meals. But I also had to sell some medicine in order to afford it which was a tough decision and I wasn't really sure that's what I wanted to do and I, I was thinking maybe I could mine some more silver so I bought one real fast and ate it and then of course I immediately had a tantrum so because of this tantrum I lost so much time that I wasn't able to go and get more silver to trade to them if I could have eaten that meal and then gotten more silver I could have bought a bunch more meals so I lost my table lost my stool lost my bed got the survival meal in me and then had to wait a little bit longer for the tantrum to wear off. So couldn't get silver, couldn't get more food, but came out of it with a catharsis. So it's not the worst thing ever. So at this time, at this point, things are looking pretty bleak. I'm trying to rebuild the table or I put in a new table. There was another table over in those rooms. So I put another table down. I tried to put another stool down. I had already built a bed so I don't sleep on the floor, but things are looking bad. We have no food. We have one piece of human meat and thankfully here comes a raid. So these people are going to prepare for a while and attack, but it should be okay. I have enough food in me. I have enough life in me to be able to survive till then. So I'm just going to be productive while I wait, put this table down and wait for them to come in and hopefully bring me some more human food. So while I was waiting, we had some good news, bad news happen. So I didn't have to replace the trap, but uh, on the way out, the visitors I have encountered the raider and they killed him for me, which is good and bad. So now I don't have to replace my trap, but now the other problem is that I have to haul this guy all the way across the ice sheet uh, and risk getting frostbite. But uh, thankfully, it wasn't a big deal. Um, it was in the middle of the day, so it wasn't unbelievably cold yet. And it's still summer or whatever, so it's not so cold that I just immediately freeze to death. So I was able to get through it okay, and now we have another source of food to hopefully tie us over until the next event comes along. So I've been waiting for a few days and nothing's really happened. I'm still living off that human meat. Decided to go and be productive, get more compacted machinery, get more steel, just keep on stockpiling resources and getting ready for future expansions if I'm lucky enough to survive based on the random events. I'm wearing a bunch of tainted clothes from that guy now, so now I should be good enough to withstand the cold all the way till sometime in fall. Uh, so now it's I'm still getting hypothermia potentially, depending on day night, but it's way slower now and I can go out for much longer. So things are going pretty good. I had some frostbite, which is not good. Uh, and while I was tending to that frostbite, unfortunately it was time for my character to have another mental breakdown. Now, thankfully I was only in major breakdown territory. So I was able to get a sad wonder. Now this could get me killed because I have frostbite, but uh, thankfully it didn't. Uh, my character wandered around and stayed warm enough. It was in the middle of the day, so the clothes I had on were good enough to keep me from freezing to death. Although I had untreated frostbite, which was really intimidating, but 
Uh, thankfully, I didn't get any colder. Nothing really too insane happened. And I was able to get through this sad wonder just fine. Get another catharsis. And this is why it's so important to do your best to stay out of extreme breakdown, break, what well, mental break threshold, I mean. Because uh, if I go catatonic, I lose instantly. If I go berserk, I lose instantly. And those are ones that only happen in extreme ones. Now, thankfully, another raid happened. And this guy was really close. So I want to run forward and get ready to deal with him if I can. But... Um, I'm not really in good position to do this, but it doesn't really matter. He's probably just gonna die, but if he doesn't, I'm a brawler, I have melee, and I should be okay. So we'll see what happens, and he goes down. Now, thankfully, this guy actually didn't die, and this time, I'm in a catharsis, so hopefully I can strip him before going insane. And I can. So now, we actually have some clothes that are not tainted. So I quickly take off my parka or a jacket, put on his parka, his tribal wear, and his hat. Now, some of these clothes are below 50%, so they're going to give me the ratty apparel debuff, but it's okay because uh, it's better than having the other clothes, and now I have multiple pieces of clothes on. So from this point, things are looking up. I have another human to eat. I have a full set of clothes. I'm not naked anymore. Now I can withstand temperatures down to, like, maybe minus 10 or minus, minus 30 Fahrenheit or something. Or what, what, I don't even know what the weather is in Celsius, like minus 10 Celsius or something. So, things are looking good. Uh, we still are up to just luck. Whether or not we survive is based on the events, what animals roam in and stuff. But we have a chance. We definitely can do it now. So, a little bit later, a transport pod crash happened with somebody. And I decided I was going to try to rescue this person and keep them alive. And the reason for this is because when you're by yourself, if you have a bad breakdown at a bad time, you just die. But if you have a second person, then the odds of survival go way up if you can feed them. Now, the other thing here is if I decide I can't feed this person, then I can just kill them. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, so honestly, I probably should have just let them die immediately, but it's okay. And then while I was doing this, another event happened where somebody wanted to join my colony. This person was my main character's brother. So if I reject this, it's probably going to make my main character sad. But also, more importantly, I was like, if my brother dies, that's even more food for me. So I'll, I don't want the brother to die. And I didn't know what he was going to have. He had Nervous and Optimist. So Nervous is one of the worst traits in the game. And Optimist helped balance it out a little. But it still was like a net negative. Really bad. This guy has mental breakdowns all the time. But at this point, I'm like, okay. I don't I can't feed three mouths. I have to keep the brother so I don't get the negative mood debuff. So instead, we really need to just kill this person. But I was kind of hesitating. I don't know why. I thought maybe it'd be a good idea to have three colonists, but I knew someone was probably gonna have to die. Also, my brother was actually able to mine, so even though he sucked at a lot of stuff, he could do mining. So while Kibbles was doing other stuff and resting, I was able to actually have this guy gather tons of materials real fast, regardless of the outcome, uh, which just makes my life a lot easier. Get me stockpiled on a ton of steel. Also, I decided I need to make a bedroom for this brother of mine, so that way I can do a little bit for his mood, have him have his own bedroom and a bed for him to sleep in and stuff should help, help a little to keep the guy from going totally insane. All right, so at this point, we got some good news, bad news. So that person we rescued decided to join us, which... It's not the worst thing ever, but now if she dies, all our colonists will get a three mood debuff from colonists died. So I'm not entirely sure what I was planning here, but either way, we still have this food available here and uh, we'll, we'll just see how it plays out. And in the meantime, I was going to try and experiment with a grow zone with a removed roof idea. And looking back, I actually probably could have made this work, I, but the problem was it was getting closer to winter, and in winter, there's no sun, but also, I just hadn't done it in a while, and I was rusty, so I did it wrong, but also, I had to move this wall up so I could remove the inner wall, so I could actually not block the windmill, so I still have power, but then be able to still have the plants. The problem is, the windmill makes inconsistent power, so sooner or later, the wind goes out for too long, and then the plants freeze to death, so... I just hadn't done it in so long that I had forgotten the exact mechanics of it. So I lost a lot of time here that I could have spent building a nice recreation room and getting an art bench and a stone bench set up and stuff. But, you know, it is what it is. We'll, we'll, you know, you, so you make mistakes, but, you know, you just try to survive in this game anyway. So after multiple days, I finally hit a point where I'm almost out of food. We only have enough left for one meal. And finally, 
bulk goods trader comes by exactly what we need at this point so i go up to the trader to see what they have and i just go through i try to get rid of things i have human leather to sell i have components to sell they have pemmican they have berries i decided to go for the berries because i'm turning things into nutrient paste which is way more efficient than pemmican so i got lucky here and i was able to keep the three um the three pawns for now which may or may not be a good idea honestly it, it, i probably should not have kept the third person i should have gotten rid of her sooner but at this point i was just pretty committed to it i don't know what i was thinking i thought maybe it was a good idea if i ever did it again I don't know that I would do it that way. Also, while this was going on, I tried to have my brother go over and quickly mine up some gold, throw a stockpile zone on top of it in order to get a little bit more stuff to try to trade with these guys and get a few more berries so that way we can survive a little bit longer. So now at this point, I was thinking about sustainability and growing crops and stuff like this. Now at this point, I was so rusty, I did not have a good plan in place, which cost me a lot. So I used the grow zone to find where one was next to a geyser nearby and decided I was gonna build a structure around it not really remembering how any of this worked um, so this right here was not what I was supposed to do because the geyser does not make enough heat and also I did not think about the fact that there's not much sunlight anymore because it's about to be winter this is something I should have done sooner rather than later now if I could do it again I know exactly what I would do now but you know hindsight's 2020 now this was not the play I realized while doing you see here now that I started to realize wait a minute I can't actually support that much room with that much heat uh, but unfortunately I got all to all this a little bit too late so things are going good. I'm working on my little grow house. It's been a few days and I don't really realize the peril that I'm in. And I go in here to help this person feed her. And of course she goes straight for me and goes for kibbles and goes to fight for a berserk fight. So I defend myself because I brawl her, I have melee and I beat her up. And now I have to tend to myself. Then I have to tend to her. And now it's just kind of a disaster. So uh, she's badly injured. This sh honestly should, should have gotten rid of her sooner, like I said, but here we are. And now I have a ton of wounds and got to do a bunch of stuff. Now, thankfully no one went crazy. I was able to patch her up and I was able to tend to myself and move about, I like, go about my business as usual. So I kept waiting and waiting and not killing off this third person. I should have killed off, wasted tons of food. And finally the decision was made for me. I didn't have to make the decision. She got a disease, an infection, and nobody in this colony is going to be able to treat that wound. And uh, I tried anyway, which I should not have. I don't know what I was thinking. I was just being too compassionate, I think. Uh, so I tried to tend to her and uh, we got a 0% tend. She doesn't even have a real bed to sleep on. The temperature's inconsistent. Uh, there's no way she's gonna beat this infection. So at this point, I immediately realize, yeah, she's done. There's no saving her. So uh, that's the end of that pawn. Uh, but on the flip side, I get a little bit more food for me and my brother. So now we get to stay alive a little bit longer. We still got the berries. So we're actually in a decent spot going into winter. Now it is the 6th of September, which is fall. And, uh, you know, things could go well. It still just depends on the events. We still are up to the events because I didn't get a good grow zone type thing figured out because I'm rusty, but uh, we could definitely do this. So I decided to make a grave and put her in a grave for now so I don't get the colonists left unburied um, problem while dealing with, while waiting. And I don't really want to butcher her, so I, I just put her in a grave for storage. Everything's frozen. I can take her out whenever I want because she won't decompose because it's so cold. And ideally, I just never eat humans again. I have all these berries. I have a snow hare that fell into a trap just now. I mean, things could go well, so we'll see. Uh, maybe I won't even have to eat human. And at this point, I was feeling optimistic. I had made my little grow room next to a geyser, but I hadn't played in so long. I didn't even realize it was the 9th of September. And uh, there's basically no light here anymore on the ice sheet, and I didn't know. So all this effort over here was for nothing. I could have built a rec room for mood buffs. I could have done so many better things. Uh, but if I do this challenge again, it, it'll definitely be a lot better. I'll definitely know what to do uh, getting this far into it one time like this. Also, we had an exotic goods trader stop by, which was pretty much useless. Uh, they didn't have anything for me that I could use at all. Couldn't sell anything. It was kind of just garbage. But I decided to turn in that room, the old geyser room, into a research room so I can try to research my way out of here because the goal is to maybe someday get transport pods and just get the hell off the ice sheet. But that's a long-term goal. Right now, it's mainly about getting stable. And that's really re what the goal is for me more than anything is getting stable to where I have crops growing and things and I'm just good to go without luck dictating what happens. I also decided to manage space well and try to cram in um, a stone cutter's table and an art table whatever in my brother's bedroom here in order to try to be more productive and get some uh, art going for mood buffs and things like that also at this point is when I started to realize that these potatoes are not growing uh, so I was still confused at this point wasn't sure 
And uh, unfortunately for me, this whole thing was a disaster like I talked about earlier. I still hadn't accepted it at this point. I was going to try to expand it and grow more things. I don't even know if I fully realized they weren't growing yet at this point. But uh, that was definitely a lost cause. Shortly after that, we got another transport pod crash. So I ran over quickly, stripped this person before they died so I could get some new untainted clothes in order to try to stay warm and wait for them to freeze to death and have more human food available if I need it. And then luck was on my side because a raid came and we got another human corpse that came from this. Uh, so now we're up to three human corpses to last us through the winter if we need to use them. So... Uh, that went well we have three humans now uh we got some untainted clothes and some tainted clothes so things are looking up for winter hopefully we will survive it's the 13th of september now and we're running low on berries but with this many humans we might just be able to pull through although we have two mouths to feed now which is a lot so we'll just have to see it's still up to luck at this point all right so i had to skip ahead a lot here because i forgot to record part of this playthrough but long story short is kibble's brother died um, I don't even remember how he died, to be honest with you, uh, but it was some legitimate thing. Like, he went crazy and then froze to death or something. It was something, like, actually out of my control. And uh, so that was that, and that was the end of him. But then after that happened, Kibbles went catatonic, or maybe it happened right after Kibbles went catatonic uh, from a, men a mental breakdown. And then, luckily, we got the Man in Black event. So there's an event in RimWorld where when your last colonist goes down, there's a small chance that you'll get an event called Man in Black. And what this does is some random person dressed in black clothing just shows up out of nowhere and uh, try you you know you can use him to try to save the situation that you're in and thankfully in this situation he actually was in a position to be able to save us uh so because of that kibbles was catatonic kibbles was going to um, starve to death because being catatonic lasts longer than the amount of food that you have left well, not that you've left, but you literally will starve to death before you come out of a catatonic state in RimWorld. So thankfully, the Man in Black event happened. And now this guy, I had him uh, during all this, and maybe right before, I was building a rec room, which you'll see at the bottom right there. Uh, and at the same time, a dining room, and this is all in two and one, basically. And what this will let us do is we can make it really beautiful and then we'll get mood boosts from having an impressive dining room and an impressive recreation room so i have the man in black working on making statues out of blocks so slate and marble and limestone and then we're going to put statues in that recreation room so that way people will be less likely to break down because we'll have a nice little dining room for people to use additionally the man in black came with 10 simple meals so, I mean, it was honestly luck that we survived, but I mean, it didn't have to go this way. It's just, you know, as you saw throughout this video, I made a lot of mistakes. And if I hadn't made those mistakes, we wouldn't even be in this position in the first place. So, yes, luck kind of bailed me out on this. But also, if I had done a few things different, then uh, I wouldn't even need the Man in Black in the first place. But either way, definitely a nice um, addition. And it, also, the statues are starting to come along. We have our first one in the rec room. Uh, the rec room is still not beautiful, but it is a start. All right, so um, Bradley, our man in black, went to hide in his room, and thankfully that vet makes him hide in his room where he's safe when another raid happened. So a raid happened, and this guy walked into our trap, which he did not die immediately, so we're going to be able to strip this guy down to get some more untainted clothes that we can either sell, or depending on what they are, we can wear them. I'll probably just wear whichever ones are the best of them, and then anything that's below 50%, I'll probably just put in storage until I can sell it at a later date. So now I'm in a weird position where I'm trying to lock Kibbles into a room by herself because Kibbles mood is maxed out extreme negative mood. And uh, it turns out making this wall is extremely difficult. I was trying to place it and immediately pause so I could walk through it. But Kibble starts to build it immediately, which means I can't walk through it. But I couldn't actually build it from the other side because the way it was working with stockpiles and all this stuff. And I was being lazy and not wanting to do it the right way. But either way, uh, the main goal here is I'm trying to lock Kibbles in with the food until Kibbles has a mental breakdown and do it in this way so that if Kibbles goes berserk, uh, Kibbles will be locked in that room until she passes out from starvation or lack of sleep. Uh, that way, if she goes berserk, the other guy doesn't have to actually fight her. Now, this is all banking on if Kibbles goes berserk. She may go catatonic. She may do a lot of different things when she goes, you know, this bad mood. But basically, the way it's going right now is uh, based on circumstances and stuff, there's like a 100% chance Kibbles is going to have a mental breakdown. Also... 
I'm doing it to separate Bradley from Kibbles because we're out of food, basically. There's only enough food for, like, two more meals. And the way I do my playthroughs, the main character is the most important one, so we're going to hang on to the food for Kibbles. So I'm locking Kibbles in with the food in case Kibbles is a breakdown. But also, Bradley's going to start starving to death, so he might have a breakdown eventually. So it's best to just separate the two people in case one goes berserk. So Kibbles is locked in for now until the food runs out, until I'm forced to kill Bradley and eat him instead. But hopefully it just doesn't come to that. So thankfully, we got another transport pod crash. So there's another person down here that we will be able to eat. And thanks to that, I may be able to let Kibbles out of uh, that room. Now also Kibbles did have a breakdown during that, but it was either, uh, it was a daze. So thankfully it wasn't the worst breakdown possible. So we don't need Kibbles to be locked in there anymore, but it is nice having Kibbles locked in there because she can't go wander off in the cold and freeze to death because it is uh, very cold outside right now, although we're through the winter already. It's it's April May now So it's not getting as cold. It's not getting negative 80 anymore But uh, it's still not safe necessarily to have kibbles leave that room Especially if a raid happens. That's really would be the biggest thing at this point that could kill kibbles if she's off wandering around in a daze Okay, so a lot more time has passed. It's now the 8th of April May and I got insanely lucky There was uh, there was an event with cargo pods that had fine vegetarian meals and had like 30 of them So we are good to go for a little while now I definitely did not make some good decisions here It would have been smart to go and trade while I still have a ton of food available But I did not instead I kept working on the base uh, but in hindsight I should have done differently, but uh, either way, you know, it works out fine right now. Also, the rec room is coming along great. We've got four pieces of art in it. Uh, I don't know what impressiveness it is right now. I think it's somewhat impressive. So now we're all getting mood buffs from having a nice recreation room and a nice dining room. And we don't have to eat, you know, we always can eat at a table. So now I'm going to start adding statues to Kibble's bedroom to try to at least give Kibble's uh, a better mood from having an impressive bedroom. So hopefully that'll stabilize it to where at least one of our colonists is much less likely to have mental breakdowns, even when we have to eat humans. So I decided to make uh, some changes to Kibble's little room down here, the nutrient paste. I'm trying to expand it a little so I can move the research bench into this room. So if I ever have to lock Kibbles in that room, Kibbles can have something productive to do when stuck in there. So kind of working on a little small project here while we just, you know, wait for whatever comes next. And a little while after that, um, we had some drama here. So there is an Arctic wolf, I think it was, out here. And... Oh, it's a lynx. It's a lynx out here. And we decided, we meaning me, but Bradley and Kibbles are going to go out here and hunt the lynx for some additional food. At this point, we have guns. So anytime something roams in here, we need to um, kite it around the other person in order to kill it. Now, depending on which way it goes, uh, it may hunt someone and then it'll be easy or it'll just get scared and run off. But either way, the goal is to have it chase somebody and have that person run around the other person while the other person shoots. And in this case, it kind of just ran off and didn't fight back. So uh, we got to go on a little chase after it to try to hunt it down and actually kill this thing. So the Lynx hunt went pretty well. Uh, it wasn't the last second it wanted revenge, but it didn't really matter. So now we got a little bit more meat to put into the nutrient paste dispenser. So that's a nice little pick me up. And at this point we take everything we can get because we never got crops actually started in this, uh, on the uh, rocky soil, stony soil in this region. And not too long after that, we had another cargo pod drop, this time with kibble, which is not an ideal food. It actually gives pretty much just, it gives actually, I think a worse mood buff debuff than eating nutrient paste human, uh, or at least close to it. It's, it's, it's almost as bad or it's just as bad. So kibble is terrible, but food is food. I mean, at this point we've been eating humans and stuff, so it's better to take it than to leave it. That's for sure. So now we got a bunch of backup food. We've got a bunch of kibble, we've got a bunch of meats laying around and stuff. So, uh, we're starting off the year, you know, pretty in a pretty good position. So now an archer named Skippy wants to join. So the way I see it is more free food and also some untainted gear. So we're immediately going to take this Skippy guy and we're going to run down. He even brought two packaged survival meals for us to eat. So we're going to run up here with Skippy and we're going to immediately make him drop everything he owns. And then we're going to make him splash around in the water until he freezes to death. And from the, it'll give us a debuff. You know, we'll have minus three mood for a colonist died. But minus three mood is not that big of a deal compared to getting some free clothes, some free meals, and not have another mouth to feed, as well as some more human meat for us to consume. So unfortunately, splashing around in water does make someone freeze uh, faster, but um, it's not that cold outside. It's only about 30 Fahrenheit, just barely below freezing. So um, Skippy's gonna, it's gonna take a while for Skippy to freeze to death out there, but uh, we're just gonna have him run off and just uh, have to wait it out till Skippy goes down. 
All right, so Skippy is uh, dying to Frostbite, and I'm trying to bring him back so he'll die closer to the base. And he went berserk, and he probably won't make it very far before. Yep, there he goes. He goes down. But hey, I've decided to bring him a little closer. I ran him off because I didn't want him to go berserk really close to the base if he did, which I figured he might, and he did. Uh, but that's why I tried to bring him closer last second so we don't have to go run as far in the cold to go and collect our human meat bounty. So things are really coming along now. It's been a little while, and uh, we've expanded Kibble's room. We've added Ark. Kibbles has a slightly impressive bedroom. Our rec room is still only slightly impressive, but you know we're gonna keep making statues and stuffing them in there until it's extremely impressive or whatever we can get. We have nothing else to do with Bradley. Bradley really can't do anything other than just haul and build things and stuff. So we're gonna keep cranking out art until we can uh, get this place all spruced up. Also, you'll see in the rec room, at some point I finally realized that I would researched batteries and now we have a battery in the rec room, so that makes our electricity a little bit more consistent. Although it was at the time I didn't realize, but the battery actually needs a wire directly attached to it, not just one of those short wires. Uh, but I realized eventually, and uh, then we'll have a battery, and it will make the heat and the nutrient paste dispenser a little more consistent. So it's been another like five days, and we've eaten through a lot of the food. Things are getting a little weird. So a person came by to trade by herself. So I threw a stockpile on some gold that I'd mined out so I could sell to her. And my main goal here, here is just to get food. And unfortunately, all this person has is five packaged survival meals. So I'm going to take them all, but I'm not actually going to sell all the gold in case I need it someday. Uh, I'm not really sure, but there's no reason for me to sell all of it right now. It's not very heavy for how much it weighs. But either way, we're going to get five packaged survival meals. And at this point, I need to make a choice whether or not to try to trade with that nearby civilization while it's still juggist because summer is the time to go do it. If I try to do it in the winter, whoever goes is just gonna freeze to death. So uh, I'm gonna make some hard choices soon. So I finally opted to go ahead and trade with the nearby uh, settlement, but also at the time I figured out there's a bug. If someone's on their way to grab a stack of packaged survival meals, then when you go to the former caravan, it doesn't show that they exist. So I actually had to wait for Bradley to go pick that up and eat that before I could actually make him bring the packaged survival meals. So that was interesting. Well, either way, he doesn't even have enough meals to get there. He only has one day of food and it takes two and a half days to get there, but I think he just recently went to a catharsis. So even though he'll be starving by the time he gets there, I don't think he'll have a breakdown he'll probably be okay so i'm gonna send bradley with a bunch of lightweight things to sell so leathers uh maybe some jade have him take the gold i don't know if i'll bring the jade jade's actually kind of heavy but mainly the gold and the leathers and anything that's just lightweight that i can sell for something and uh, i'm gonna have to sell all that stuff and try to bring back as much food as he possibly can so of course while bradley was gone i got attacked by two um wild monkeys and thankfully we had the traps and the monkeys just died immediately. I didn't really want Kibbles to fight them because even though Kibbles is a brawler, uh, it's just not worth the risk of an infection. If Kibbles gets an infection right now, she will absolutely die uh, without Glitter World Medicine, which we do have two, but even then Kibbles is such a bad medic, she may just die anyway if she gets an infection. Also, Bradley's gone, so if she gets to a battle with her life with the infection, uh, she could just die and not be able to tend to herself. But anyway, Kibbles is going to try to do some productive stuff while Bradley's gone. There's some snow hairs have roamed in, and even though Kibbles hates picking up guns, it's only for a little bit that we'll have Kibbles pick up a gun and try to kill some of these snow hairs, and then run back and drop the gun before she goes you know, it berserk from the negative mood debuff of having a gun equipped because if a brawler has a gun equipped, it's a minus 20 mood debuff, which is like even worse than when her brother died. Is that, is that upsetting to them to wield a gun when they are a brawler or vice versa? So finally, I realized it was just smarter to shoot at the rabbit. And as soon as the rabbit had a lethal wound to just leave and I could just come back later and finish off the rabbit and then bring it back, which is much smarter to do and much more efficient. And an additional third rabbit roamed in and we may do the same thing, but this rabbit's actually so far away. I would like to actually kill this rabbit and not just come back for it. It's all the way on the south side of the map, but same thing. We're just going to kill more rabbits. Kibble's going to try to be as productive as she can while Bradley's off trading. So finally, Bradley arrived at his destination and let's see what they have. Well, they have lots of animals. They have some meals, but the big thing here is they have rice. Rice is a very cheap food that doesn't weigh very much and in a nutrient paste dispenser will make a ton of food. So Bradley's going to sell pretty much everything that he can. I don't know if I actually want to sell the medicine, only if I have to, but we're going to sell the gold, we're going to sell the leather, we're going to sell everything we can, and then try to buy all the rice that they have. And it turned out that we actually have... Uh, enough money to buy all of the rice that they have and had a little bit of money left over so after the rice 
I also went on to buy um, a couple of the meals just so to give Bradley something to eat on his way back to the colony. So while Bradley was away, Kibbles got raided by some idiot who walked into a trap and died. So that's more free human food for us. I'm going to throw him onto the human pile outside of the base. So we'll eat him whenever we need him. Actually, in this particular case, I'm going to bury him and we can unbury him whenever we need to uh, and eat him if we need him. But otherwise, uh, we're good to go. More free food, more human food if we need it. And right after that, uh, we had uh, some traders come in. And we didn't really have anything to do with these ones. These were exotic goods traders or slavers, I think it was. And there really wasn't much interaction I could have with it. So that's kind of just a waste of an event. So then something weird happened. Um, I had some two human meat that was open to the outside world. So of course this Arctic wolf came into my base to eat that two human meat. It also made me realize I could make some serious uh, wolf traps in the future. And if I ever do this challenge again, I realized a really good idea I could do to take advantage of that. Um, so now this wolf is in the base. And I don't really feel safe having it this close because if it goes to hunt me, then it's going to um, just not have enough warning and I won't be able to get into a door off to fight it. So I'm going to try to take some pot shots at it to aggro it, at which point it'll walk into a trap. If it's not aggroed, then when it walks into a trap, it won't actually trigger the trap. But if I can get it to uh, if I can get it to want revenge and then walk through the trap, it should instantly trigger the trap. So it's going to go up through the trap right now. It's not even aggroed. But I got lucky, and even when they're not aggroed, there's still like a pretty high chance, like one in eight, I can't remember what it is, that they'll trigger the trap anyway. And it did. So I got lucky, and that Arctic Wolf is no more. He brought us some more food, which was great, because Kibbles was pretty much out of food. And now Kibbles is all good until uh, Bradley gets home with that rice. So I'm in a hurry now to rebuild these traps, because there's a polar bear that walked in. And if I don't have at least one, preferably two traps, by the time the polar bear tries to eat me, uh, I could be in trouble and be trapped in my home. So I'm trying really hard to make some marble real fast and make some marble traps before that polar bear gets hungry. Oh, so Bradley finally made it home, and of course he walked right past the polar bear, but thankfully the polar bear was not hungry at the time, and Bradley made it back into the base safely. So, after all that rice and stuff, I just decided the polar bear was too good of an opportunity to give up, so I'm gonna, I decided I was gonna go out here and shoot at it, and then try to run it through the traps. And thankfully, I didn't even have to do that because as I went out, it decided to hunt Bradley. So all Bradley had to do was just run back into the base and close the doors behind him, which should lead the polar bear right into the base. So uh, if this goes well, we should get some more free food that'll help last us through fall and mainly just fall. So somehow this polar bear was just not triggering traps. I'm not really sure how he wasn't triggering traps, even after he was like fighting from animal revenge, he still wasn't triggering the trap. So not really sure. I guess the polar bear was just secretly nimble. Not really sure how that works. But either way, we got a bunch of shots on the polar bear and he should just bleed out. But I think he just ends up walking through the traps and finally triggering them. But either way, the polar bear is no longer going to be a threat. It looks like um, the polar bear is pretty much done for. Actually, we didn't trigger revenge until just now. And that must be what it is. If we don't trigger revenge, then there's a chance that they'll just uh, not trigger the traps. So things are looking pretty good now. We have a bunch of rice. We have like a huge stack of polar bear meat. Uh, we got tons of st steel stockpiled. We've got uh, tons of art come along and stuff. Our, our our rec room, our dining room is just beautiful now. So I'm just going to organize some more. And I'm, I think at this point is when I finally started to realize I've got to try growing crops. So we start. Uh, and also the research is um, almost done in the solar panels. And once we have solar panels, I was going to throw down a bunch of solar panels, which is actually a really bad idea to do because it's almost winter. But I was going to throw them down and try to get a crop of potatoes done with a sun lamp before uh, the sun stops coming out. So Kibbles finally finished the research on the solar panels. So I'm going to start slowly building up solar panels and trying to get a grow room going so that we don't have to trade again in order to stay alive. And we don't have to, you know, trust fate and luck like this in order to even, you know, continue living. So now it's finally time. We're going to go ahead and start laying the outline of the grow room to put a sun lamp in. Uh, ice sheet regions have stony soil here and there, so we pick the biggest patch that's close to our base, and we're going to stick a sun lamp into this room, and then we're going to try to get some crops grown in here uh, before winter comes. So the room is almost done. We've made a connector room, too, so we don't have to leave our base in order to go in here. And uh, things are looking up for us. Like, if this goes well, then we should be pretty much good to go, and... Um, just be like invincible at this point like it, I don't see any way to lose especially because in the ice sheet challenge if you play it like this your wealth is so little that the raids are never bad even on the hardest difficulty every single raid we've had has been one guy with a melee weapon and I don't see that changing anytime soon because it's hard to not have low wealth 
in an ice sheet challenge. So um, once we get this grow room g going, we are pretty much set and uh, there's no more danger of anything bad happening ever. And speaking of which, a uh, manhunter pack showed up of rats. And uh, so I actually don't want to use up my traps on these rats. So I'm going to take Kibbles and Bradley and they're just going to stand out front of the base and they're going to try to shoot the rats as they come in or melee them if they have to. I'm willing to take a little bit of injury here in order to not have to waste 70 or 90 marble, I mean, in order to rebuild those traps. Not only does it take a lot of marble to rebuild a, like, a marble trap, but it also takes an enormous amount of time to make a trap out of stone. So like having to rebuild them is a huge amount of work lost. So for something as simple as a rat and only two of them, it's better just to sit here and shoot my gun at them and uh, melee them if they get close. All right, so the grow room, we put some heaters in it. We got the sun lamp in it. It's warm. It's lit up during the day. And we've planted the potatoes in the south and some rice up at the top just for some quicker food from the rice, even though it grows slow in stone, stony soil. And uh, yeah, things are coming along great. Our rec room has five pieces of art now and a sixth one coming along eventually. And uh, we have multiple uh, solar panels, a windmill. We have a battery. Uh, we've lots of stuff stockpiled like things are just really looking up at this point so now that we're in for the crops life has devolved into a game of patience kibbles is researching while bradley keeps making endless amounts of art for just no reason to make things more beautiful every bit of mood that we can get from art and beautiful places is uh we'll take it at this point we still got a lot of rice while the potatoes are coming in and we've still got some meat from a uh, wolf that wolf that we killed and all this so uh also there's a thing with the hopper if you don't know it's super annoying is when there's like less than enough in the hopper to make a nutrient paste meal your pawns will not be able to use the nutrient paste dispenser so you'll actually have to go to the hopper and turn off the meat that's stuck in it and then tell them to haul it off the hopper and then put the new one on it's the most ridiculous thing ever to have to do but uh i've had to do it so many times at this point and i just had to do it again right there to get the three wolf meat off in order to put more rice on the stack on the hopper uh but that's just a normal part of nutrient paste dispensers unfortunately so another polar bear roamed in and we've got to deal with more of this nonsense with polar bear but at the same time it is free food uh, both my colonists have guns. We're just going to shoot out and try to get it to walk in here, which it took the bait immediately, walked through the traps, and we downed the polar bear. So there's some more free food, more free leather for us to use, and it's just, things are just really going good at this point. Like, I, I think this challenge is really just done. I think, I think we've pretty much won. And another day, another dead snow hair. We just keep stockpiling food for winter. Just anything we can get, we're just going to keep collecting food. And, you know, the rec room has all that art. Kibble's bedroom has art. You know, we've got tons of stone and steel stockpiled. We have electricity. Um, we have a huge batch of potatoes coming in, enough to last more than all of winter, You especially with the nutrient paste dispenser. Um, we've just got pretty much everything we need, guys. And, you know, I think... I think I'm just going to have to stop this challenge here. I don't really see any point in going further because uh, at this point, it's inevitable. I've done these challenges before in the past. And once you get to this point, you've pretty much won. You have infinite food and it didn't go as clean as it could have gone. I could have been at this point in like the first year, but I was just so rusty that I had to like leave it up to luck for a lot of it. But either way, we got to this point and now there's really nothing to do except continue research like, if I were to keep going, then I would research microelectronics and then research transport pods. And then we would take a transport pod and get off the ice sheet and go down to a temperate forest with a transport pod. And then after that, we would just play a normal game of RimWorld where we would be either hold up in a mountain or try to leave the planet or go and try to kill all the other colonies that exist on the world or just whatever, you know, same. It'd just be the same thing as starting a game somewhere else. So uh, I feel like at this point, we've pretty much just beat the game. I mean, for the beat the challenge, at least. Uh, so, yeah, I think I'm just going to stop the challenge here. I really hoped that I hope that you guys enjoyed this challenge. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, definitely leave a like or, you know, a comment or something like that. And uh, just check out my description for other things, my socials, if you want to follow me or anything. And if you want to help me out, um, check out, there's a game I'm making on Steam called Art Gallery Simulator. And I'll link that in the description of this video below the first paragraph. Um, but yeah, if you check that out on Steam and wishlist that or something, that would help me out a ton. But yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this content. I hope you guys enjoyed this little playthrough. I definitely enjoyed playing it myself. And I hope to make more videos like this in the future. This was actually a lot of fun so uh there you guys go that was the ice sheet challenge and uh, i had fun i hope you guys had fun and i'll see you guys in the next one